what the last time we left off with you guys was last summer we were about to make our way to Alaska and we filmed the whole drive up and then got there put our cameras down and pretty much didn't film anything else other than short Instagram videos for the rest of the summer um, we loved that sad that we weren't able to share that with you guys but uh, we did really love our time in Alaska we spent three months there and it's one of the reasons why we bought this next rig we want to do more of alaska be a little more remote and get to the places that it's harder to get to by regular camper car any of that so that's kind of where this whole news story starts this is the next project not sure why we do this to ourselves but here it is a 24 foot 1978 sea camper I'm sure some of you watching may have never heard of a sea camper before. So let's take a look back to when these boats were in production. In the early 70s, a new breed of recreational vehicle known as trailerable houseboats, often called camper cruisers or mini cruisers, were becoming more popular. The sea camper was considered a high performance cruiser blended with the live-in comforts of a land camper. The sea camper was designed by Otis C. Burham and was built by Farrenwald Enterprises, the manufacturer of Dutch craft travel trailers. During this time, Otis was nationally recognized as one of the country's leading designers of powerboats. He had been designing and building boats since 1936 under the business name Borum Boats. The Borum family once stated they preferred the Sea Camper not be called a houseboat because they didn't want anyone confusing the Sea Camper with the slow-moving, stodgy image that the term houseboat often conveys. Otis wanted to create a product for boaters who were tired of cruising in the same bay or lake and for the campers who felt like they were missing out on the fun of boating while traveling in their RVs. At the time, the Sea Camper was the only true combination of cruiser camper to conform to both Coast Guard and recreational vehicle standards. Today is June 11th, 2022. <laughs> Captain's vlog. I was gonna say day one. Day one, yeah. Well, let's get going. Oh, go. All right. So this is the current state of the interior. It looks worse than it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just a lot of storage. Yeah, lots of windows. Oh, and then I didn't even say- Show them the fly bridge? Yeah. Yeah, this is what we're really excited about because not all the models come with the fly bridge. Right. So we looked really hard. There's going to be two seats here that kind of go back to back, but we'll be able to drive and steer the boat from up here. So we'll be able to see everything, which will be really cool. And no AC unit. <laughs> yeah, this will just be like a larger platform. walkthrough of what we haven't drawn anything so this is just off the top of our head being in here for the first time without anything else in here what we have in mind for the build so right up here captain seat helm obviously staying the same tommy wants to do a swivel seat so that you can turn it around and we can do a countertop to be a desk right here um, over here is the couch and that's going to stay a couch, and we really like that this is already a built-in piece of fiberglass and there's storage here, but we'll fix this up to be better storage. Um, so that'll stay the same, or like, same concept. Right here is where we're going to do the kitchen, and that's where the kitchen was originally in the sea camper. So it'll be a smaller kitchen, but it will be sink, fridge, a two burner stove, storage, probably a flip up countertop over here. So this is where the original bathroom used to be, and you can see a groove in the ceiling of exactly where it was. We're not going to go with how they originally did a bathroom in here, which was floor to ceiling. Um, we don't want to lose the 360 of windows in here, so we are going to do a bathroom that you typically would see in like sprinter vans or van builds, where it's a countertop that flips up or flips up this way, 
and then there will be a compost toilet inside that you can remove and you step in you bring the shower curtain to the ceiling shower in here put the toilet back that'll be a harder to envision until we actually build it so you can see it on this strip we still need a walkway so we're gonna do really narrow cabinetry but we'll have to get really creative on um, how to make it a usable space still kind of like the cabinets or the cubbies that we have in the airstream right now for all of our clothing we'll have to get creative and then on this side is where our bed will be and it's not a wide enough path for like a queen size bed so we're going to do a convertible couch that turns into a bed and slides out that's what i want to do tommy wants a fixed bed but we'll once we get to measuring and see what we can really fit in here we won't know exactly but i think it's going to be a convertible couch to bed and the only thing that we haven't really talked about is the fact that so the floor dips down here the ceiling dips down on the back side of the boat so we are probably going to have to lower the floor a few inches so that tommy can comfortably walk around in here and that will be we'll see how much we can do he's 6'3 i'm 5'8 and I'm pretty close to the ceiling in the back. So we'll just see what happens there. But taking the AC unit out is gonna be a huge win on height in the back. Oh, and then we haven't even talked about the fact that I were to do this build just like all of our other builds. So like solar, everything's gonna be off grid. And we're in the process of trying to figure out where we're putting solar panels, where we're gonna put all of our batteries, all the components for it. So it's just, there's a lot of moving parts we haven't even measured or tried to figure out yet and it's exciting. Alright, so we just wrapped up day one of working on the Sea Camper. Yeah. And we felt like we needed to touch base on a few of the questions that we got on Instagram that we haven't answered yet. Number one, why we're buying the Sea Camper. There's adventures to be had that we cannot get to by camper. Yeah, this gets us way further. And uh, so one of the big pushes after our summer in Alaska last year was to do Southeast Alaska um, by way of the Inside Passage. So from Washington up to Glacier Bay National Park. A lot of cruise ships do that route, a lot of sailors, a lot of kayakers, like yeah. there's tons of people and different types of watercrafts doing the Inside Passage. So that's the really big push for this. There's like a number of other trips that we have in mind for the Sea Camper. We haven't already said it, it is a trailerable houseboat. So it's 24 feet long. It's a little bit longer because it was repowered with an outboard. Yeah. So it sticks out a little bit So it's, it's a little longer than the Airstream, but it has an eight, eight foot beam. So mm -hmm. it's only eight feet wide. So it is highway legal. It only comes up to 12 foot, two inches. So it's shorter than a uh, like fifth wheel camper. Mm -hmm. So we can take this anywhere that we could take the Airstream. So we can camp on land with it. We can camp in water with it. On the list of places that we are really excited and planning to take the Sea Camper, Lake Tahoe for me, I've always wanted to do a summer living on Lake Tahoe. I like Lake Powell. Yeah, the Florida Keys are really big. We wanna go back to Baja and do yeah. the Sea of Cortez. That's like huge on our list because we love camping along the Sea of Cortez. So being able to access islands and hidden beaches and just go way further. And a lot of cities on the East Coast that are just impossible yeah. to camp. We can camp on the water Maine, and it's, it's more normal. Connecticut, yeah. New Hampshire. And I feel like there's certain places that you go to where the huge draw is water. And yeah. I just can't think of a better way for us to get to explore those places even more. 
the people that created the Sea Camper literally wanted something that they could camp in on land and then throw it into the water and it'd be a super capable boat. So it is offshore rated. Yeah, so it's not like your typical houseboat. Yeah, like pontoons or like just for lakes. And this one's, it's planes, so that's really big. We yeah. can get up to a plane and go faster. So we're not like most houseboats and trawlers yeah. are kind of just. We do have so much planned for this boat. It's gonna be just like all our other builds where it's off grid, stacked with batteries brand new on the inside mm -hmm. when we're done with it. Um, we have a really cool paint design. We have a really uh, cool layout. I think it's way better than the original. But what we're the gonna idea. do, the idea <laughs> yeah. I really like. The yeah. idea could possibly be better than the original. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun though. We're like pushing ourselves again. So mm -hmm. we're instead of aluminum work and metal work, we're kind of gonna try to do some fiberglassing and get good at that, which is a little it's, scary, it's but new. it's definitely gonna be fun to challenge yeah. ourselves. We hope you guys are just as excited about the Sea Camper build as we are, and stay tuned because there's a whole lot more to come. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. Thanks guys. See ya.